We've come down to Ban Hong. This is an hour south of Chiang Mai and it's on a direct road on the 106 that goes from Chiang Mai, Lampun and out down to the south. It joins up with the road that goes from Lampang down to Bangkok. So it's out in the wilderness. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that this is just another temple another you know little building with a roof on it and lovely little bells clicking in the background and pigeons in the grounds and sparrows and you know all the things that you see when you go to a temple and you think it's just another temple well in actual fact this is a rather special temple and i want to introduce you to this place here which is called an ubosot and an ubosot is a relatively new understanding of something for me. I, I'd heard it and seen it before, and I knew that in, you know, this type of place existed, but I didn't put the two together. But this is called an ubosot. And an ubosot is a place in a temple that you will see a sign that says, if you read Thai, you'll hear women also say, I can't go in there because I'm not allowed, because the sign says that in Thai. Well, this ubosot doesn't allow women in because it's a place where monks are ordained. Now, this ubosot is one of the most uh, important ubosots in Lana. And the reason I say Lana is because the patron saint of Lana, he ordained here. Put yourself back 1899. Where were you then? What was happening in the world? Here, in this wonderful little building called an Ubosot, was a monk at the age of 21 being ordained to follow his life path. He was literally born into uh, the uh, monkhood. 21 years of age, he was officially ordained. And then at the age of 60, nearly 61, he passed away, still a monk, just down the road. We'll take you down there and show you that in a moment. Now, I'm not going to make this boring. I'm going to try and make this as interesting as possible because it could be completely flat and boring. And you've probably clicked off already and, you know, you thought, oh, there's another interesting video and it's got boobs and, uh, you know, it's got uh, bars and uh, beaches and all that sort of thing. Uh, but I'm going to talk to you about this guy here. This was a rebel. Well, I'll take you around this wonderful building here. Uh, I briefly explained about this being an ubosot and you'll see these stones sticking out of the ground. Today they've been glorified by these little obelisks but these are stones which represent the eight stations around the periphery of the ubosot. So that's three. There's number four at the back. Number five. Number six is looking a bit sorry for itself here. Number seven. And I guess number eight must have been here. But there's a ninth one. And as we know from living in Thailand and, you know, hearing so much about uh, Thailand uh, traditions and superstitions and so on, nine is a very special number. And there is a ninth uh, stone in the center, in the foundations of the Ubersot. And when you go to a temple and you see all these wonderful buildings, if you don't see these little stones and there's not a lock on the door and there's not a little sign saying women are not in allowed, then um, you know that's not an ubosot. So I thought I'd bring this to you for this video because it's a, a great learning point for me uh, today. I also want to share with you um, a wealth of knowledge that uh, a, a dear friend um, that I've come to respect by looking at many of his writings, both on Facebook and his website, uh, a website site called alacarte.com. I think that's the dot com on the end, uh, but uh, alacarte Chiang Mai, sorry, alacarte Chiang Mai. And 
he does tours or he arranges tours this guy he's a dutch guy who's spent what would seem his whole life investigating the culture and the history of lana and he has written so much detail about uh, lana that it, it seems a shame not to promote it uh, and not to get it out there for the likes of you who've spent time watching my videos and interested in thai culture um, and anybody else that's coming along to understand it uh, that wants to get underneath the surface and scratch the scratch that new paint away and find out a little bit about the history of of uh, thailand northern thailand lana franz betgam is a, a a regular contributor to siam memories and other facebook groups that talk about history in lana in thailand and i'll leave below uh, links to his uh, website uh, a la carte and you can see there uh, that he is very interested in promoting uh, tours but also understanding about lots of things uh, in, in Lana. Indeed I, I'd also leave a link above uh, to a guy recently, uh, Glyn Willett uh, of Willett's World. He has been doing some marvellous videos recently. You ought to go along and maybe hit him up with some subscribers because and some likes because he's done a, a series on uh, on a motorbike, uh, small road trips out doing a, a couple of days here and there. And currently, I think he's over in Mei Hong Song on his road trip. But he did a road trip down here to Lee and obviously Ban Hong, where we are, to see some of the places where we're going today. And what he has to offer is just like Franz does he looks at the background he looks at the history and talks about it in an interesting way and provides you with some nice scenes so please check that link out above this year Chinese New Year is the year of the tiger and behind here are lots of tigers with Krubar Sidi Chai statue Krubar Sidi Chai in 1878 he was born in the year of the tiger too how what a lovely coincidence that is i didn't think about that before i came but it's true well we've just come about half an hour south of ban hong and uh, traveled directly down the 106 uh, it started to rain uh, i mean this morning the clouds in the sky were really weird we had a thunderstorm ish type you know really quite heavy storm last night and uh, lots of weird noises of blowing trees and airplane noises over Chiang Mai I don't know what that was all about but uh, today was bright and sunny when we uh, were waking up this morning then the clouds came in and we've driven down here in almost like a murky um, not a mist so much as you know sort of a uh, you know a really sort of rainy season uh, sky well now we've come to Ban Pang and Ban Pang is almost down in the area of Li the sub province of Li but we're still in uh, Ban Hong um, the temple in Ban Pang is an actual fact called what Ban Pang and this following on from what I was talking about earlier is where Krubar Sidi Chai uh, started his life as a young monk he came here uh, at the age of 18 uh, from the local village he was then ordained at 21 up at Ban Hong and then returned here to this temple uh, not quite as we see it today uh, it was a little um, you know, little um, village temple and he spent the rest of his life here and for 60 years he stayed here moving off out to do what he was renowned for now Krubar Sidi Chai was actually known as the not just uh, the patron saint of Lana but the engineer he spent his life building he spent his life working on things he's the guy that actually um, initiated the construction of a decent road up to what Doi Sutep uh, the 
road, the paved road that's uh, there now. This guy, Krubar Silichai, he's the guy that initiated that. He oversaw that construction. He also oversaw uh, around about 107 temple uh, constructions throughout uh, the north of Thailand. An amazing achievement for this guy. Look at the age of that tree. I mean, it's amazing how it's still living. Amazing. Look at it. It's coming into bloom at the top. And it's a frangipani. Liwawadi. All these are Liwawadi here, but this magnificent Liwawadi here, look at it. Absolutely gorgeous. Well, earlier, I started to talk about this monk as the rebel. Uh, and unfortunately, he was seen by many as a rebel. And it, it was that um, rebelliousness um, that actually won the hearts of many Thai people. Now, after about 10 years of being at this temple as the abbot, apparently he took it upon himself to ordain himself a local respected person. And he thought, this guy is a good person, you should become a monk. Welcome, you can become a monk. Well, this sent tremors through the Sankha management uh, it, the structure of, of control of what monks do. Uh, the, uh, it's an act of law here in Thailand uh, that controls the, what monks do. And this Sankha uh, management summoned him, first of all locally to Li, down to the centre that uh, he, you know, he was nearest to here, and he was reprimanded. And he was imprisoned for a period of time in Hari Punchai, uh, the Wat Hari Punchai in Lampun, for his offence. Well, another part of the rebel uh, came to the, the fore. When he was actually imprisoned, he was kept in a temple and he wasn't actually allowed to um, practice Dharma with other monks. He wasn't uh, a, able to leave the temple. He was in the temple the whole time. But apparently a band, a mob of people from this area went up to Lampun to demand that he was released. And the authorities felt that this was something quite, uh, you know, to, to, to be feared because the people were revolting against uh, the powers. Anyway, after a lot of struggling, he was released and uh, at a later time he was re-arrested and uh, I think Wikipedia's got him down to about three or four arrests overall um, and in the end it turns out you know happy ending nice story that he was actually um, assisted to leave uh, Lampun to come back down to uh, Ban, Ban uh, where are we now? Ban, Ban, Ban Pang, uh, by the uh, leader of the Sankha, because uh, it, it was seen that he was, um, you know, doing good. What in actual fact is that he was misunderstood, and what he tried to do was to actually bring uh, the good out of people rather than put bad on the Sankha. There's so much information on Wikipedia. I'll leave a link below um, about some of the information that Wikipedia contains about the story of uh, Krubar Silichai. But um, I think what I'm telling you is hopefully not going to be too much of a hodgepodge. Now, there's something else that I want to pick up on the detail uh, that uh, I've, I've read both on a la carte Chiang Mai and also Wikipedia and other links I've been able to find and that is the the link between the ravaged uh, northern Lana uh, area uh, of uh, northern Siam. Now Thailand there's a fly buzzing around me. Um, the linkage between the ravaged country 
uh, that was left by the Burmese and the, and the fighting that went on through to the, from the 15 to the 1700s. W following the Burmese uh, defeat, the countryside was laid you know, pretty, pretty bare of people, but also the uh, temples had been ransacked and ruined. Part of the reason he has become the patron saint of Lana, uh, because he, he, he brought uh, people back to the temples, he brought temples to the people, and apart from uh, King uh, Kawila, who uh, was the, uh, the ruler in Chiang Mai in the 1700s, um, Krubar Sidichai was responsible for most of the uh, developments. So when we go to a temple today, you know, many temples are beautified, maybe by the current people who are there, but Krubar Sidichai kicked this off. He, he started off these fantastic developments for a temple to exist and attract and be part of people's culture. And I think that's another reason why this man was so important and it remains so important in people's minds today. He brought Buddhism back to the people by bringing the temples back into healthy being. Well, many people possibly don't understand that when I first came to Thailand, uh, I used to have a motorbike and I'd jump on the motorbike and I'd go off on adventures out. I went through a series of motorbikes, small motorbikes, big motorbikes, and I'd do different lengths of trips. And I'd come out into the countryside and find these temples in the middle of nowhere. And I was fascinated with water and forests and temples. And this particular area, I would always come down the main road here and go to the national park at the bottom there and look at the water there and maybe turn left and go off up there to, to you know, a fantastic road and enjoy the motorbike trip along the road there but I never stopped here. And it really irks me. It really drives me bonkers that for all these years, this has been here and I didn't know. It really makes me feel that there, I should have known this was here. About a year ago, I thought I'd trace the steps of Krubar Sidichai because I'd seen so much about him and the family had always uh, talked a lot about uh, how respected he was but I didn't know any detail. And I started looking and then I started finding these details about uh, there being you know a, a lot of work that he did and then it rang a bell to me about a, an old car and it was this car that re really you know I, I brought me here because I thought about 12, 14 years ago, somebody said to me there was a car somewhere. They didn't know where it was. It was the first car up, up Doisetep and it's still alive somewhere. So I thought, I'll go and find that. But you just keep putting these things off the back of your mind. You know, you don't actually get round to doing it. Well, I wanted to do it. And a year ago, I thought I'd get on and do it. <laughs> and it's taken me this time to come here. So I'm glad I have. And wow, what a great place this is. It's full of interest for a character and whilst Krubar Sidichai uh, was here he spent 40 years as a monk he was here at this temple uh, based himself here he actually created an ubersot of his own he created an ubersot here and you can see uh, there are there's the pillar on this side there's the pillar pillar in the middle, one at the far end, and indeed this is an inner sanctum for men only, for monks being ordained into being monks. This ubersot you can see is made out of this uh, volcanic lava type brick and it's a very distinctive building and uh, this is the as I, as I say, the Ubersot here at this temple where monks are ordained into priesthood. But there's one more place I'm trying to find and I think I may well have to go up there to find it. Well, 
Well, the rain has just stopped, so we can come into this wonderful building here. We're going to come into this museum. Now, this is a real fantastic treat for me. So we're seeing in this museum many of the uh, utensils used by Krubar Silichai during his life. Uh, the utensils like uh, his robes, his inner robes, his pillow, his spittoon, and uh, vase. And there's the paraphernalia for special purposes, like the, the chair he once used to supervise the construction, and the chair for palm leaf dharma inscription. Well, I always think the worst of things. Uh, when you see something, uh, you know, coffin shaped, you think, well, this is gonna be a coffin, but no. This is in actual fact a basin. This is an ang sack pa. So washing your washing. So you a, a monk's robes washing container. This is what triggered my um, imagination to come down to this temple. Many of you will have seen this image in photographs, in videos. Now this was in 1935. Apparently 10 villages uh, in the area of Sutep were tasked by Krubar Silichai to take an area of the road and dedicate their resources to building their slab. A wonderful achievement by all of those villagers to build the road, but obviously since it's been improved, grown. But the original that this car journeyed and this being one of the first cars to journey up the mountain was travelled by Krubar Silichai himself. I'd recommend that you visit Franz's website. There's a page all about this uh, project of Krubar Silichai, one of the many projects he was involved in. And he actually goes to meet the people in the photographs that are still alive today or the grandson of the owner of this car. It's all on his website. It's a tremendous amount of information there. Here we see many of the scriptures that would form parts of ceremonies. Some very valuable because of age, relic, statues of Buddhas. Wow. It is the museum above where the car is and the bed is and the chair is below. It's a beautiful place. There's many scripture boxes here. The scriptures were kept in here to keep the bugs away. And it wasn't until the 19th, 18th, 19th century that these old boxes became pieces of valuable furniture for homes that scriptures then were taken out and kept in cabinets. Previously the scriptures were written on paper and that paper was eaten by bugs and it was only through these cabinets that the scriptures would last, that the, um, you know, the longevity of the scriptures would last. Unfortunately because of the boxes being sold to make money uh, by temples, uh, by people who wanted to, you know, get some cash. The scriptures were then stored in cabinets. Bugs got into the cabinets, uh, you know, like glass cabinets and like this, this sort of thing, and started to eat the manuscripts. And the manuscripts then deteriorated. 
So these are very, very special structures. These are very special pieces of furniture in a temple. Thank you for coming with us today out to Ban Pang and specifically here to Wat Ban Pang. Uh, it's a lovely, lovely place to come. Uh, I'm really pleased we've come at last and uh, I wished I'd come sooner. Behind me you can see this tremendous building. It's done with little glass tiles. Uh, this is the museum building. In the top is the uh, place where the statues are and in the bottom is where the car, the bed, the chairs and the living utensils are kept. So when Krubar Sidichai finally passed away at the age of 60, he was held at the temple here for a year and he was held on display for people to come pay their respects. He was then given to uh, the Royal uh, Commission for final formal cremation and that cremation was done in a place that in my next video or a future video I'll show you a little bit more of what Cham Devi. Now you're bored to the sick to the teeth about my stories about Cham Devi but this guy was the guy that put the um, Cham Devi back to the in a glorified way that we see it today and he had a lot to do with what Cham Devi and he was interned in the stupa in Cham Devi, as his ashes also are interned here. They were divided uh, throughout the, uh, the country uh, to be buried in stupas. So there we have it. A special place. I welcome that you should see this video. I would welcome you to come here and visit this place. It's a very, very special place. And Dai, who's come along with me today, she's really thrilled that we've been and experienced all that we have here today. Thank you, and see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>